disciples that you shall receive power and you shall be my witnesses. So you are actually called to witness Christ. Can you tell your neighbor you are called to witness Christ? We are called to witness Christ. Now the word of God says in Acts 2.32 that Jesus Christ of whom we are all witnesses. So all of us we are called to do what? To witness if you read Matthew chapter 28 from verse 19 going onwards, it is talking about the commissioning that, that Jesus gave his disciples. He told them that, go unto all nations and preach the gospel, bapt baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost and teaching them to obey all things. So it is a command. Witnessing Jesus is a command from God. It is not a request. God is not requesting you to witness Christ. God is uh, commanding you to do what? To witness the love of Christ. So it is a responsibility that all of us have been given. If you are born again Christian, one of the achievement, if you read the book of Daniel, chapter, uh, you know the book of Daniel? Yes, you know the book of Daniel? Yes. There is a verse that says that those who know their God, they shall do great exploits. That is Daniel chapter what? 11 verse 32. That those who know their God shall be what? They shall be strong and they shall do what? Great exploits. So God is calling us to do great exploits in this vineyard. And one of the things that Jesus told his disciples that the laborers are few but the harvest is what is plenty and then he told his disciples to pray so that god can send laborers into the harvest field and you are the laborers can you say to yourself i am a laborer i am, a I am. And verse 9 what does it say eh? the bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in 
your heart yes. that Jesus Christ is the Lord, then you shall be saved. Yes. And why are the people getting saved? The answer is in what? John chapter 3 verse 16. That for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So why are you witnessing? So that people may come to believe in Jesus and then so that they may not perish. Those who don't believe, they will do what? So you have to tell them that you have to believe in Jesus, confess with your mouth, and believe in your heart. All of us, those who are born, when you are born in your, your, your mother's womb, from your mother's womb, you are born when you are sinful. Because you are born uh, in the sinful nature of Adam. But you have to be born again according to John chapter 3 verse 5. Just like Jesus was telling Nicodemus, you have to be born Again, okay. you should be born of the Spirit of God. Then you shall be in. You shall inherit the kingdom of God. So you have to minister. We are going to take like twenty minutes to minister the love of Jesus, His saving grace. Why Jesus died on the cross so that all of us, if we believe through that, we can be forgiven our sins and cleansed, and then we be born again. Be born of the Spirit of God. Can you say Amen? amen. Can you say Amen? amen. So from here, kindly, from here, go and witness Christ, okay? Tell the people how Jesus saved you, what, what Jesus has done in your life, okay? Tell them about the love of Jesus. Because you just believe, and then once you believe, then Jesus take away your sins and you become a new creature. When you are, once you are born again, the old is gone and the new has. So you are born again. Then you start a new journey with Christ. So let me give you verses to help you. The first verse is Romans chapter 6 verse 23 which says that the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. The next one is Romans chapter 3 verse 23. God's glory. Then the next one is John 3 16 which says that you have to believe in Jesus so that you inherit everlasting life. Sour, sour. Then the next one is Romans chapter 10 verse 9. You have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. You need person to salvation, you pray for that person. Sour, sour. Are you together? Yeah. Then uh, please, you bring the feedback to us, you bring to Madame Masi or me, okay? So that we have the record of the, the class and the name of the person so that we can do follow up on how to go about that. So please let us get that feedback before the end of this day. Uh, then on Wednesday, it is prayer and fasting, okay? So we shall be praying and fasting. Listen, it is optional. So, light break on Wednesday, we shall meet there. You know that prayer mountain? We shall meet there to, to make a conclusion during lunch break. So it is a great thing. There's something God is going to do powerfully during, uh, during Wednesday. So that prayer work is very powerful. So when you are praying during this week, pray according to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. Sour, sour. Building on a firm foundation. Other Their testimony is part of witnessing to your friends. So be in group of five or four. Then on Wednesday, we've been told there'll be prayer and fasting. So class directors and assistants, kindly write the names of those who will be fasting. So and may God bless you. You are going to take 20 minutes, okay? After that, and believe in you. My son is sitting right there. Let me write that. Amen. Amen. Mentioned. He also had some things. Let us listen to what he had. Number one. Also, he had blocks. Blocks. And herbs. And herbs. And, and ten. Stop. So let us compare. Abraham had petals, silver, gold. Lot. Lot. Had ten. I ask you the difference. So, who is wealthier? Abraham. Abraham is wealthier. You can't understand that. Let us go slowly by slowly. It is like a lesson until you understand the, the reason. Mm -hmm. So that the man should not support gives you for a reason. 
that boy represented Isiolo County. When he went there, he almost cried, <coughs> telling people, "See, si tuonge bana," because why was he saying that? Because he faces challenges where he comes from, and that know that you, as a child, you have you have a voice. This is the twenty-first century. Now the government have realized that children also have voices. The government has realized that we can govern ourselves. Remember that I told you we have a president of the children. If you remember, if you are keen at their same. So this, uh, the president, he is in class eight. Class eight. He is in Mombasa County. He comes from Mombasa County. His name is Samuel Smith. Yeah, so this boy, the government has decided for us to have a child representing the whole children from the country. It means that the government has known and has understood that we children can lead ourselves. We children have a power that we can give up the problems. Remember the Shakahola massacre. Do you know that it was a child who went on to the police or to the authorities that uh, he came from this place, uh, from Mackenzie's place, and went to say that there are people who are being murdered there. Do you know it was a child who made this thing uh, known? Do you know that? Okay, if you didn't know, now you know. So it means that you have voices. With everything you are going through, you can speak out and people can hear you. We have our teachers here. Our teachers are here to help us. There are some cases like uh, there, there are uh, uh, some people from the different counties, some of them talked about secu insecurity. They targeted the disabled people. Uh, I'm not supposed to call them disabled. They are called differently abled people. <laughs> Just continue, continue. You're supposed to cross your legs. Are you getting it? So when you are sitting down, you're supposed to know and ensure that you have seated well so that you, you can be private. I told you you're private, you're, you should be private. You as a guy. Are you getting it? Yes. And uh, the other thing we learned about is your personal hygiene. Not personal. Not personal. It's personal. So uh, with your personal hygiene, you are supposed to know that you are a girl and we have some diseases or infections that can you can uh, you can get infections if you don't uh, if you don't have hygiene that uh, the the lady who guided us had a costume there the panty had a panty there uh, she did it practically so we were taught on how to wash them but i just tell you like theory then the practical will do them in the So you, you, sh you should ensure that when you are washing your panty, you wash it with a lot of water. Yes, with a lot of water. Are you understanding? And ensure that you use soap. And when you are hanging it, don't hang it under your bed or uh, use a, like, uh, you are basin, then you hang it on your basin. That's not hygiene. Are you getting me? You are supposed to air dry it. We have hanging legs. Thank God. Are you getting me? That is, pre that is to prevent you from getting uh, the uh, infection. Some of you say that you have infection. Maybe it's the way you wash or you, uh, you, you dry your, your panties. Are you getting me? 
Uh, there are some things I would like to tell you. <laughs> As a plan, how, uh, how are you supposed to introduce yourself? Maybe you are given two seconds to introduce yourself in front of the president of Kenya. How are you supposed to introduce yourself? Yeah, just do it yourself. You are supposed to stand firm and say, I am. Are you getting me? I am. Yeah, but you're not a Diagofa. So I am a Diagofa. That means you are firm and you are confident. You are confident about yourself as a girl. So we have confidence. Then attitude. A stands for attitude. You are supposed to have the right attitude towards yourself. If you want to be confident, you are supposed to have the right attitude. So A stands for attitude. If you are, you have brought a book, don't you have, don't you? Let's not have it as a show. D stands for? The way you are just saying it. So D stands for distress. You are not supposed to engage in a lot of things. You are a girl. You are a student at this time. You are supposed to engage what, on what students do. So you are supposed to de-stress. Are you getting it? Yeah. So L stands for? Attitude. B. C. And D. And E is supposed to stand for emotion. Emo is it emotion or emotion? Emotion. Whichever you like. Now, E stands for emotion. You are supposed to know how to control your emotion. I know we are girls. Falling in love is not something that is uh, secret or something that is available. But you are supposed to know how to control your emotion. Are you getting me? So A stands for attitude, B stands for belief, C stands for change, D stands for distress, E stands for emotion, F stands for fear. F stands for fear. And G stands for God. So you are supposed to fear God. Are you getting it? Yeah. Hi, G. Your, these are what are supposed to guide you as a guy. Are you getting it? Yes. <laughs> ah, so uh, and you should have the qualities of trust, respect, communication, and advocacy. You should have qualities of trust, respect, communication, and if you trust in yourself, you cannot let someone destroy you. Yes. I know you understand what destroy means. Yes. If you trust in yourself, of course, I don't expect you to be telling me no. <laughs> you should trust in yourself. Oh, yes. Then you should respect yourself. Yes. And if these two have not worked for you well, if there's someone disturbing you, or there's something that has happened to you, you are supposed to apply communication. Okay. Then advocacy. I'm not sure that I remember what that is. And uh, there's something, the CEO talked about success and failure. Success and failure. Know that success and failure is predictable. Yes. You're supposed to know that success and failure is predictable. <laughs> the example is the justice agents. Do you know who is a member of the, of the justice agents? So one of them is the police. A police is a member of the justice agents. And when you are faced with any trouble, not any trouble, you can face any or you can go to any police. A policeman let it be policewoman. You can go, you can go to any of them and they can help you. We have a prosecutor. 
a prosecutor can also help you. So you can go to the children's office. We have children's office all over the country. Meaning that even where you come, you come from, we have a, a children's office. Are you getting me? And you should be able to know that on November... No, let me not say any that. A question for you. The person who gets it, you come for 10 more. Why? Okay, 15 on Japan. When is the Children's Day celebrated in this country? Yeah. November when? Yeah. 12. Yeah. 10. Yeah. All of us are saying 10. Yeah. November? Yeah. And now if you believe in yourself, I don't raise your hand. 10. She said November 12th, that's a no. Ten, it's a no. Who, who knows? Fifteen, no. Who, who, can you raise your hand if you have one? Sixteen, no. Who is saying? Okay, okay, okay. You, we won't miss that one. I'll eat it myself. It's November 20th. is predictable. So um, uh, thank you for this chance. Although I've not said everything, but uh, what struggle in the academic performance. And then we also pray for the leadership of the school. We also pray for alongside the leadership of the school, I mean the administration, we pray for the incoming and the outgoing leaders. You know, very soon we shall be doing a lecture. So we pray for a successful election. You pray that the leaders we shall get, the student leaders we shall get, will not work together with the culprits. Uh, they will not spare culprits. Yes, but they shall be a change agent. Just pray for leaders who are change what? Agents. So just pray. Pray honestly to the Lord. Then well, let's also pray for the Kenya Student Christian Fellowship. We pray for the ministry. Then we pray for our country, Kenya. You know what we are facing? We have financial challenges. And the, the cost of, 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 of uh, commodities are actually rising, okay? And uh, people are struggling actually outside. So you need to ask God to intervene, okay? And then in the evening, we shall have tree planting. Can you say tree planting? So immediately, I think at five, uh, we shall... Uh, foundation so you are supposed to note down what is a foundation a foundation is established through our faith in Christ. So when we look at your foundation, it is your basis or groundwork of your faith, okay? Yes. Yeah, on what on what ground or on what basis is your faith established? First Corinthians states that first Corinthians chapter three verse eleven states that there can be only one true foundation of the church, and that foundation is Jesus Christ. There are many other foundations that churches may be built on. Some churches are built on personalities of pastor. Other churches are built on false doctrine that is not in line with God's words. Some churches are simply built on social gathering of people social classes they are identified by particular people maybe professionals or maybe businessmen gathering together to form a social network in the name of religion however none of this
those other foundations will survive for eternity. So we are learning here that the only foundation that your faith must be established on is your foundation in Christ. Now, if you, you as, you as the building, as the temple of the Holy Spirit, your foundation must be established in Christ Jesus. So we are going to have some discussion in groups of three, okay? And, uh, we shall select some of you to, to present based on what you have discussed in your groups. And we have a very big field here. We have a very big word. So you are going to spread out but when you hear worship, you come back, okay? Yes. But you are going to be in groups of three. Groups of what? Yes. Groups of three. Yes. So I want you to cooperate in those groups. Sawa sawa. Yes. Now, I want you to go listen. Now, based on the time we have, it is 5.17. I want you to discuss in the next... Five minutes, okay? Yes. I want you to discuss. I want you to run that that discussion like the speed of Elijah, okay? Yeah. The speed of the Holy Ghost, not of Elijah, of the Holy Ghost. So can you disperse okay. in groups of three? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Are the consequences of, of building on a foundation that is not firm. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15 and uh, 15 to 17, we have found that the consequences of not building on a firm foundation is one, you will suffer loss. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15. You heard me. The first yeah. consequence will suffer loss. And the second one, the second one is that God will destroy him. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. So if you destroy yourself because of the temple of God, God will also destroy you. Okay, I'll finish. That's according to number two. We have get this, we have this we have described these ones we have discussed these ones that is building upon personality of pastors or what they organize <laughs> and another one building upon false doctrines are those ones build your foundation in Christ then you are compared to a wise man who built his house on a rock and that house was able to withstand the environmental forces like strong wind and so many other storms that would come and destroy houses and a person whose foundation is not based on Christ is compared to a person who has built his house on a sand that house cannot withstand strong wind okay so in short when your foundation of faith is established on jesus jesus christ is actually the word of god okay john chapter 1 verse 1 says that in the beginning there was the word the word was with us the word was with god okay and the word was god and that word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory so Jesus is the word of God. When your faith is established on Jesus Christ, then it is established on the word of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So your foundation of faith is based on the word of God. Do you have the full knowledge of the word of God? 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, for you to have the full knowledge and firm foundation in the Word of God, there's some there are there are, there are normally some aspects I want us to consider. Number one is hearing the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Then that is Romans 10:17. Then we have reading the Word of God. Then we have studying the Word of God. Then we have memorizing the Word of God. Then we have meditation, meditating on the Word of God. Then we have doing the Word of God. When you consistently walk in that, then your, well, your foundation will be firm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now the Word of God says that if you have firm foundation, then even your faith, you are spiritually strong. That kind of faith cannot fall into what? Cannot make a believer a believer to fall into temptation. So why do Christians fall into temptation? Because the because maybe their faith is weak, okay? Yes. Because it is firm faith, like that one of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It was a faith that was firm. They were able to defend their faith. That faith, like that one of Prophet Daniel, that the person who was put into the den of lions, but he still stood the test of times. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. On wealth. Don't base your faith on the things of the world. Base your faith on Christ Jesus. <laughs> I am not believing in